All right, wonderful. So listen, I am so glad to be here talking to all of you about my very most favorite thing, and that is plant-based nutrition and kidney disease, because I'm, I've, I've worked with kidney disease my entire career. I am passionate about helping people who have either failing kidneys or failed kidneys be the healthiest that they can possibly be. And so that is what we're going to talk about today. Now, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um. So here we are, and the title of this talk is Plant-Based Kidney Protection Made Easy, Whole Patient Strategies, because we're going to talk about who you are as a whole person from CKD, which is not on dialysis, all the way to dialysis. Okay, so let's talk about some objectives. So today, like I said, we're going to carry the theme of total body health resulting from plant-based nutrition. And the reason I say that is because just because you're struggling with your kidneys, you cannot forget the rest of your body. Uh, we're going to provide truth about nutrition and kidney disease that you may not have heard from your doctor. We're going to take a walk through history. The reason I'm doing this is because sometimes people say, well, why wasn't I ever told this? I'm going to explain to you why you were never told this. Um, help you understand important topics of nutrition and chronic kidney disease from pre-dialysis all the way to end stage um, and dialysis. And then we'll talk about simple tips, things that you can do right now um, to improve your health and set, help you set, set yourself up for success. Okay, so let's start at the beginning with whole food plant-based nutrition. So the reason that we're starting here is because this is highly evidence-based. If you've been in this, um, following a lot of the speakers throughout these presentations in, in this um, whole uh, seminar series, you know that by now. There's long-term overwhelming research and epidemiology. If you look at groups of people who are healthy and live really long lives, most of those, all of those really eat a form of plant-based nutrition. Okay, so with that, let's just talk about some of the things that surround kidney disease, because what I want you to walk away from this slide with is that plant-based nutrition is helpful for all the other things that you may have going on. And also that, you know, a lot of times people think, oh, well, it, it's in some way deficient. And that's not the case. I think you'll see after this, it's actually superior. So if you look at obesity, um, and this is these, all this information I'm giving you is from this one paper. It's an update um, for physicians on plant-based diets. For obesity, um, what it looked at was 87 published studies. So, and, and if I talk about, if I say, if I use the term vegan or vegetarian throughout this entire um, presentation, it's because the study I'm referencing uses that. Um, I like to use whole food plant-based because there's a big difference in say a junk food vegan diet versus a whole food plant-based diet. So I'll just say that up front. But um, in this study, vegan or vegetarian diets were highly effective for weight loss. A vegan diet caused more calories to be burned after meals in contrast to non-vegan diets, which may cause fewer calories to be burned um, because the food would be stored as fat. So there's a positive association between meat consumption and obesity that they pulled from these 87 studies. For diabetes, they looked at the Adventist health studies. The Adventist health studies are, um, it's a group of studies where they followed the Seventh-day Adventists. This is a, um, a religious group where plant-based nutrition is part of their religion. And they found that vegetarians have approximately half the risk of developing um, diabetes as non-vegetarians. Heart disease. This is one comorbidity I'm actually going to really go into at the end, towards the end of this presentation, because what you need to know is that if you're a kidney patient, you're a heart patient. Most people with kidney disease actually die of some kind of heart complication. Um, if you look at the Lifestyle Heart Trials by Dean Ornish, he showed not only that you can stop um hold in its tracks, atherosclerosis, the, the laying down of plaque in the arterial walls, but that it can actually regress. It can actually get better. Um, and then the lion diet heart study showed um, it, it looked at Mediterranean um, type diets using fruits, vegetables as the base. Um, and that these are much more heart healthy. There was a 73% decrease in um, coronary events and a 70% decrease in all-cause mortality. And then high blood pressure 
is pretty nailed down that a plant-based diet is going to improve blood pressure. Um, please note that diabetes and high blood pressure are the two main causes of kidney disease. So we definitely want to do something about those. And for high blood pressure in 2010, um, the Dietary Guideline Advisory Committee actually performed a literature review and they found that vegetarian diets were associated with lower systolic pressure and lower diastolic pressure. So all that just to give you a bit of a background. Now, here we are at kidney disease. Does plant-based nutrition help those with kidney disease? Yes. So I'm going to show you how that is. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start with pre-dialysis. And I'm going to follow the same pattern with dialysis. I want to show you case studies of actual patients where plant-based nutrition helped them. Then we're going to talk about the history of plant-based nutrition in pre-dialysis, because that's very important. And then the research behind that. Um, behind why it's important and why it helps now. So a case study, a history, and a research. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's talk about some patients. Let's give you some hope here. So this was the very first patient I ever worked with in the pre-ESRD space. I started my, my career in kidney disease straight out of school in dialysis. But when I was in dialysis, I kept thinking, you know, my gosh, I, I'm from the South. I'm from just South of Memphis, Tennessee and South Haven, Mississippi. And I was noticing like in Memphis, dialysis centers are popping up on every corner. I mean, it's like a Walgreens. They're everywhere. And I thought we've got to do something different. We've got to um, help patients. And so um, the I began, I was working on my master's degree and I began doing all my research in this area. And I noticed that over in Europe, they were doing things very differently. They were putting patients on low protein or very low protein diets, supplementing with keto analogs, which we'll talk about what that is. And, um, and the patients were getting better. Their GFRs were getting better. So I said, um, one of his, this man heard me speak the son of this elderly man. And he said, I want you to work with my dad. Okay. So if you look at this graph, I started working with his dad in March of 2012. And you're going to see the line shoot straight up. Okay. What this is, this is the man's glomerular filtration rate. What does that mean? That is a lab that tells us how well your kidneys are working. You want that to be a higher number. You want that to get better. So. I had hoped when I began working with this man that we could at least just keep him stable. His GFR was 15. That is a time when most doctors want to start dialysis. And in fact, his doctors wanted to start dialysis. But he said, you know what? He told his doctors, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to work with this girl that I found. So here we are. He's working with me. His GFR got better. It went all the way up to 25. And you'll see that kind of went up and down and up and down. This is something you might expect if the GFR is that far along, if it's that far gone. We didn't have keto analogs at this time. They weren't even available in the United States. So we dropped his protein very low and we supplemented back with amino acids. We kept this man off of dialysis for 16 months. Now that may not seem like very long to you, but he was 84 years old and he wanted to live his life. And we did that with diet alone. There was no medication changes at all. Also, if you notice here, his albumin level got better. What does that mean? Albumin, a lot of dietitians don't like albumin. They say, oh, it's not a good marker of nutritional status, but it, it's what we've got. So it, it is a marker of nutritional status, but it's also a marker of like mortality and health. You'll see that when we began to work together, it got better. It did eventually go down some, but it only went down to 3.5. So we kept him nutritionally sound so that when he did start dialysis, he was stronger because the first 90 days of dialysis are critical for patients. You've got to be strong, physically strong, nutritionally strong to start dialysis. I have had patients who didn't work with di dietitians pre-dialysis start dialysis with an albumin of down in the twos, and that's very dangerous. So we not only kept him off dialysis longer, but we helped him start dialysis better. Okay, here's a new, a new one. This is a younger man. Um, he had IgA nephropathy, which typically will affect younger people. It was a college student. His mother found me. Um, I was taking a spin class in a gym and um, the instructor knew what I did for a living and she was talking to me about it. And this lady heard and she said, she looked at me and she, she said, would you please help my son? 
This is how desperate people are for help with kidney disease and they're not finding it. And I said, absolutely. So I started working with her son. Um, after only two months, his serum creatinine improved. Look at how well it improved. So serum creatinine is another marker of kidney function. It's what we use to actually calculate the GFR. You want the serum creatinine to be lower. And look at his, it dropped all the way down from almost 4.5. Look at this, all the way down to three in just two months. Nutrition changes alone. Okay, this is another patient. This is traditional hypertension. Um, remember I said that hypertension and diabetes are the two main causes of kidney disease. Um, and this patient went from an eGFR of stage three. So if you, if you know about kidney disease, it goes in stages, stage one, two, three, four, five. Once you get to five, it's you're near, you're almost to dialysis. 5D is dialysis. This patient was a stage three and they improved to a stage two in only two months by working, eating a whole food, plant-based, low-protein diet. So here's some other case studies. This is a lupus nephritis. So I'm trying to show you a lot of different causes, people with different causes of kidney disease. So you know that this really works for everyone. Um, lupus nephritis, when she started with me, it was in February of 2022. By June, the GFR went up from 39 to 54. Um, one that we called an unknown cause, um, probably this patient needed a biopsy, but either way, from April to June, the GFR improved from 38 to 47. So I love these studies because it gives me, it makes me excited because these patients get hope. They get hope that maybe they can follow the dialysis, miss the dialysis chair. So the question you may be asking yourself, which a lot of patients do is, okay, well, why did my doctor tell me there was nothing I can do? Now, there are some nephrologists across the country that actually do refer to dietitians and do understand the nutritional aspect of this, but some of them do not. And they'll just say, well, there's really nothing you can do. I'm going to put you on an ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin receptor blocker, and we'll just wait for dialysis. And I'm going to tell you, do not accept that. But the reason I'm going to show you why. So we got to go into some history here. Um, okay. So before 1972, if your kidneys failed, that was just it. In 1972, Congress in the United States passed a law um, called the Entitlement Law, where everyone could now get dialysis and Medicare would pay for it. Before that, we had to do something different. Guess what they did? They treated the patients with diet. Um, and so this goes, you'll see it goes all the way back to 1918, 1963, 1964. These doctors are well known for treating kidney disease with diet. Every one of these diets were low in protein and de-emphasized animal protein. The very thing that I'm doing and some of my colleagues who are working in the pre-ESRD space are doing now. This is why you need to be referred to a dietitian all showed a decrease in uremic symptoms. All that means uremic symptoms, when your kidneys begin to fail, your kidneys filter out toxins. So when they begin to fail, they're not filtering out toxins anymore. And so they call them uremic toxins. Your body's getting toxic and it gives you symptoms. All of these worked. Okay, so what happened? Why is this not being taught now? And we, now we have to go to the MDRD trial. So the MDRD trial took place from 1989 to 1993. This trial still haunts us today because what the trial supposedly showed was that a low protein diet produced a worse outcome or inconclusive at best, that a, a low protein diet did not help patients. The problem is this trial was not very well structured. There were many issues and I'm going to talk about some of those. So, um, the results of the MDRD trial were based on prescribed protein intake rather than actual protein intake. Well, any dietitian in the world will, will tell you, sometimes I prescribe things or I ask patients to do things and they don't do it. Just because it was prescribed doesn't mean the patient did it. Um, enrolled patients didn't have to have, didn't have to exhibit evidence of progressive renal failure. So if we're trying to slow progression, they need to exhibit evidence of progressive renal failure. 
Okay, ACE inhibitors are commonly used to slow progression of kidney disease, um, but they can mask the benefits of diet. So they would need to be really controlled in the study to kind of stay on top of them to see actually what they were doing in these patients. But they were treated, these patients were treated with them in a very unregulated fashion. Study group B had no control group, which is a problem in research. Um, a rapid decline in the GFR in study group A was followed by slowed progression. So really, the trial wasn't long enough. It needed to be longer to, to evaluate the study group A. And then also the regimens failed to maintain adequate calorie intake. So if you don't maintain adequate calorie intake, you will use the protein you do take in for energy, and that can put you in a malnourished state. So let's talk about more recent research then. If the MDRD trial is not what we want to go by, what do we want to go by? So this is a great study by Brunori and colleagues. They looked at elderly patients. Um, so they're greater than 70 years old and they had very low GFRs. Remember, I told you the one patient I worked with had a GFR of 15. They were ready to start dialysis at 15. These people had a GFR of five to seven. So in this study, they were either randomly um, assigned to a very low protein vegan diet that was supplemented with keto acids or keto analogs. All right, let me tell you what that is now. A keto analog, protein is made of amino acids. You have three macronutrients, carbohydrate, protein, and fat. Most people know that. Of those three, the only one that has nitrogen is protein. And you have to filter, your kidneys have to filter nitrogen waste when you break down protein. That is why we back up on protein. The problem is if you back too low, you can become protein malnourished. So what do we do? We give back amino acids that don't have nitrogen. That is a keto analog. It is an amino acid that doesn't have nitrogen. That's what they did for these patients. Um, and so uh, so the, the two groups were they, they were put on a low protein vegan diet supplemented with keto acids or they were put on dialysis without dietary intervention. And what they found was that the death rates between the two were not statistically significant. And so what the authors concluded is that this diet is safe, a safe method for postponing dialysis, especially in someone older. Dialysis is hard. Um, Re and colleagues, this was a meta-analysis. What is a meta-analysis? It's just where the, the researchers pull together a bunch of studies and compare all the results. So they pulled together 16 trials um, and here's what they concluded. A low protein diet from these 16 trials enhances the conservative management of non-dialysis dependent chronic kidney disease. So it, it maintains the non-dialysis patient where they are and it's considered a potential option for CKD patients who want to avoid or defer dialysis initiation to slow down progression so you're going to slow progression. You're going to put off that dialysis chair while the risk of protein energy wasting and cachexia, that's just malnutrition, remains minimal. What they're saying is a low protein plant-based diet slows progression to the dialysis chair and will keep you well nourished. That's what they're saying. Here's where we are, though. The unfortunate truth for pre-dialysis patients. So if you are a pre-dialysis patient, I want you to take to be activated in your care and I want you to be your best advocate and ask for help because here's why 48% of patient participants had never seen a registered dietitian in this study of pre-dialysis patients nearly half of the patients in this study reported that their doctor never even suggested it so if your doctor doesn't suggest it you suggest it most participants agree that medical nutrition therapy is important for pre preventing progression of kidney disease. The patients know this is important. They have to ask that their doctor get them to somebody to get some help. Patients are interested in being referred to a registered dietitian nutritionist. And most patients, 63%, either agreed or strongly agreed that they can easily attend another appointment to see a dietitian. And the reason that's important is because some people will say, oh, well, they don't want to go to another doctor appointment. But these patients said, yes, I do. I want to go see a dietitian. In fact, and most dietitians nowadays, they work virtually anyway. If they're in the pre-ESRD space, they're going to work with you via Zoom or something like that. <music>